Ah, uh, it's been a long time since we even covered the Blue Rodent, haven't we? And I just know the best way to start today's topic. That felt so much better. Okay, jokes aside, I get it. We all felt this way with Sonic at some point in our lives, and today's no different from that sentiment. You see, I love the Sonic franchise, not as much as the Mega Man one, I'll tell you that, and I basically grew up with the blue blur of speed ever since I can even remember, so I guess like, what, four or five years old, give or take? Uh, I don't know what age we suddenly gained something called a conscience, but let's say around 2005, more or less. Since then, I played Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube, as well as two battles to then Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, and on and on to the current day, as you see this man before you losing sanity every single time he has to talk about the damn hedgehog, as he's now wearing a costume made for him back in 2015. But despite that little generous very generous personal history lesson there the focus of today's video isn't so much of a retrospective kind of thing rather than an introspective of the franchise as a whole and the reason i say this is well because of the title of the video itself we're all about addressing the biggest elephant in the room here and learning how to make the quote-unquote perfect sonic game oh yeah we're making one of those videos today so get comfy now, making the perfect Sonic game, see, this idea is already going to be conflated by many people out there, both within the Sonic community and those among YouTube who kind of already did their fair share of homework making the concept itself. As I'm sure many have already done so, I understand also that the sentiment behind why I'm even making this video in the first place can come off based on several recent factors, both on the 2D and 3D front in terms of Sonic content. In fact, this very idea itself has always been in the back of my mind ever since the release of Sonic frontiers in 2022 as well as the recent final horizon update back in last year that i think was a solid experience muddy with some very very flawed level design and execution on their part i mean it was still a fun time by sonic standards and easily something to get used to in this new era of sonic that we are currently living in but you know eh, it could have done better then we had on the 2d side of things sonic superstars where that was also like a solid experience that had its flaws on it as well but for what it was it was a good classic Sonic game by the end of it. Okay, well, good is kind of subjective here as well. I think you're starting to see the point here. And lastly, but also as important as the others, there was Sonic Dream Team on Apple Arcades, where despite not having one because, well, I'm broke and no money, I still thought that with the footage I've seen kind of looked like a pretty solid modern Sonic experience, given the visuals and designs it had for its overall gameplay. Also, the art style they had for this Apple Arcade exclusive was pretty fantastic, man. I wish future Sonic games can look like this. But again, all of these are great experiences, but because of their ambitious nature in some aspects, more so than others, it leaves me and many Sonic fans out there about the possibility of seeing this so-called perfect Sonic game, which, for the sake of naming it, the Sonic Adventure 3 we've always craved since 2001 or 2005, depending on which generation of Sonic fan you're asking. And so now that we have a somewhat solid framework to start things off, I will say that as a quick disclaimer, of sorts of course these are going to be my own ideas and opinions about the franchise like look i am no game developer or game designer but i do pay very close attention to how a game plays and functions because given the nature of this channel i review them for a semi-decent living you know so the same rules are going to apply here for this discussion and i kind of hope you understand that Please understand that. I'll also be focusing on the 3D Sonic games as to organize myself a little bit better and to obviously show that I have more of a bias with those style of games from the franchise compared to classic Sonic games. And so in terms of constructing this perfect Sonic game we have going for ourselves, it's kind of more like building the perfect modern Sonic game. But obviously I'm going to be addressing the issues with classic Sonic throughout the video. But just wanted to make sure you understand that distinction before moving on. That being said, the conversation starter here here is going to be the following. Since 1991, Sonic games have certainly been ambitious and honestly, the most adequate of all franchises out there. But why am I going as far as to make that suggestion that all Sonic games were always stuck in the middle ground of mediocrity rather than accepting that some games were good and others were just okay? Well, the reason why is obviously so you can comment below and have that viewer engagement with me going because that will definitely boost this video out there to the larger audience, I'll tell you that. Look man, it's not my choice in all this, after all this is YouTube and you gotta pay the bills somehow and get on your knees in terms of making that good view revenue. 
No, I don't mean it like that, you perverts. Shame on you. In all fairness, the main issues I have personally with determining what is a good Sonic game or not is that they are all highly and I, I gotta emphasize this, HIGHLY subjective at the end of the day, more so than any other franchise, believe it or not. To put it this way, Sonic games are often like the Rorschach test of gaming. You show somebody Sonic Adventure 2, and someone's gonna say it's either good or one of the best games of all time, while another one is gonna say, oh, it should definitely burn to the ground. That or somehow unanimously agree that games like Super Mario Wonder is a great 2D platformer, but say make a video about how classic Sonic is being overused and deserves death, yeah, suddenly everybody's gonna be out to FBI raid your door now, aren't they? What I'm getting at here is that there's no real in-between scenario when it comes to the Sonic franchise, and because of that, and especially how perspectives change over time with some Sonic games, I think the best way to approach the subject here at hand is to just holistically view every Sonic game out there as best as possible, while removing the subjectivity for a second, and focus more on like the objectivity of each and every game. Though to be fair, each game is a very loose term here, since I'm not gonna be really diving into every single game out there as I don't want to waste any more of your time. After all, we have over 10 handheld games, about 8 2D ones, and almost 13 3D games that to cover each and every single one of them here just to fit the mold of that perfect Sonic game would have me losing both sleep and sanity. And with this franchise particularly, yeah, that is not something you really should be doing in my opinion. But now having settled the most chaotic foundation there is in a Sonic video, let's actually build this damn hypothetical good Sonic game, shall we? Because boy, am I ready whenever you are. Now, the only way to construct this perfect Sonic game is by looking at the parts within each and every single installment of the franchise that has released thus far that brought praise and downfall to the nature of a Sonic game. Yes, this even includes having to go through games like Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2, which I still ask myself to this very day, who actually likes these games again? Oh, yeah, that's right. One of the key points to understand what makes Sonic games good, or at least depending on who you ask in this case, is that movement and controls need to be something that have to be of utmost importance. You see, Sonic can't be Sonic if he doesn't run fast, but if he runs way too fast, then things aren't going to be looking too good for the guy. To go back to the idea that Sonic games being good are highly subjective, a lot of people have a major preference on that adventure game style of speed because of how well balanced it was regarding Sonic's movement, as well as how he interacted with the level design. Design. All to put it all into one little bubble here, look at Red Mountain and then people will say yes this is peak Sonic. Sonic Adventure 2 stages highlight this with their linear but still explorative level design that has always allowed Sonic and even Shadow to run from point A to point B without so much feeling weight or slowed down by the controls, hence the opinion of this game often being good. They run fast without feeling like you needed to slow things down and the parts where you had to slow down to look around for a bit weren't much of a hassle since it still stayed true to the nature of the gameplay style it presented. Also, so Sky Rail, you guys, is like one of the best Sonic Adventure 2 stages out there, and it's only for Shadow. Like, I'm just saying, Shadow was always one of the greatest characters of all time. By the same token, Sonic Generations and its modern stage designs managed to stay with a linear but also explorative design based on the boost mechanic that still ends up being one of the best Sonic level designs in recent memory, and recent is like 12 years ago by the way. So to start with those building blocks for our perfect Sonic game here, the first thing would be to continue what we know of the adventure games and obviously from the boost formula, and simply allow for better mobility in Sonic that would stay true to the core concept and principles of going fast. Something like what we see in classic Sonic games as they still give plenty wiggle room for Sonic to run fast and gain speed and momentum, ensuring that you aren't being slowed down in the process, plus also having the ability to look around and explore for new pathways. Or how in Sonic Unleashed, there's that feeling of reward when you understand the level design and Sonic's movement in each stage and allowing for the best optimal route and time possible even if you need to press a button to go fast. In fact, continuing on with the subject of a classic Sonic games, they can even help out in allowing some additional controls and options for the player just to feel the need for speed. While despite being 2D and by extension we can even add the handheld games like the Advanced Trilogy and Rush, they ensure that Sonic is equipped with a good set of tools to utilize all to add a flavorful experience running through the end of each stage. That's why for some out there, their good Sonic games are often the classic games and even Mania because of how it allows Sonic to explore through his surroundings and still maintain the speed of momentum whenever you're in the mood to go fast. And the 
same can even be said with how Sonic Frontiers opted Sonic Speed with a drop dash and spin dash mechanic to never lose that speed as you explore through each island, even though that was almost 6 months later after its initial release. Something of that caliber would greatly allow for the perfect Sonic Speed formula to occur in the 3D setting, allowing more for Sonic to utilize and make sure the game is more fun to enjoy as Sonic rather than someone who is controlling Sonic, if that makes any sense. Next is constructing the level design itself, or, or rather, combining both the gameplay elements and exploration values to utmost perfection from both the 2D and 3D Sonic games. Normally in a Sonic game, the whole purpose is to go from point A to point B in the fastest time possible, as expressed by the con artist himself Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima back in the early interviews of the first Sonic game, expecting players to just speed run through the game and reach the end as fast as possible. While it certainly gave Sonic the edge of the competition back in the day, we also can't forget that Sonic games are also platformers and speed is something really meant to be its defining gimmick. After all, that was the whole reason for Sonic in the 90s just to say that it's better than Mario because it goes fast and has quote unquote super Sonic blast processing. That's why you see in most 3D Sonic games, there's this sense of a balancing act between continuing the game from each level while ensuring there is room to breathe and take a break every now and then without so much slowing down the pace. Sonic Adventure, Unleash, 06, and Frontiers kind of demonstrated that with the thanks of a hub world design, allowing a gap in between for Sonic to catch a break every now and then when he's not busy rolling around through the speed of sound with places to go. That and being chased by an orca for the second time now. <laughs> Talk about the case of the deja vus. And with Adventure 2, while not having a hub world design, they kind of did this with the help of the Chow Garden and cutscenes between the end of each act that prompted a free time for the player before obviously moving on with the next stage, be it another treasure hunt from Knuckles or Rouge, or just completely bleeding your ears out with Tails or Eggman. God damn it, you guys, stop it, please. I'm begging you, stop it! Stop it! Sonic 06, as broken as the original game can be, as despite Project 06 being now a thing, especially gave a new hub world design for Sonic to explore through given the chance that it, well, given the chance that it worked when it wanted to. However, the only downside to the whole hub world concept here is that it can lose the patience and pacing of a Sonic game, which is why people often say Sonic Unleashed is bad, besides the whole loud trumpet Werehog Night stages losing the momentum of it that was curated from the day stages before it. Or how while you were enjoying the lovely stage of Emerald Coast back in Sonic Adventure 1, now you have to run around and waste time learning where to go next, especially after experiencing an intense ride of beating an entire avalanche and a snowboard. Or how again in Sonic Unleashed, in order to proceed and continue on with the game, there was the sun and moon medals to collect and how they were so damn annoying to grab because of their placement in the day stages, and again, how sometimes the Werehog stages slow down the pacing of your rather fast 3D platformer. Also, I will never forget them about the sun medals in those freaking stages, I swear to god Empire City was just a pain in the ass! But the hub world in our ideal Sonic game though would be something that was crafted extremely well in Sonic Frontiers, a playable sandbox that allowed us to progress through the game without so much feeling like we've wasted time in the process. However, unlike Frontiers in this case, I wouldn't say that putting a bunch of random blocks around the island is peak hub world design, but rather integrate it with the island itself, like I don't know, actually go inside the volcano in Chaos Island, or maybe have you know like a sandstorm in Ares Island that were forced on you to go underground and explore like a cool oasis like structure and maybe even search for hidden treasures of the sorts. Or like can you even imagine you're in Station Square for a second, it's Sonic Adventure 3 and somehow you don't feel like going to the the next stage or whatnot, you can just grind your ass out and do some cool style points in the city streets like you would do in a game like Jet Set Radio. You know, now that I say that out loud, that'd be really freaking cool. Regarding actual level design, we can also take a few pages from the classic games and try and stretch them out into more of a 3D plane of existence while also keeping to the linearity of the modern games. And this is where Sonic Heroes comes into play as it can help us illustrate this with its level design as more often than not, the stages they have are like the closest thing to a perfect balance between modern and classic elements and this game freaking released 20 years ago. <laughs> now you understand why this game is considered the best of the franchise? To then construct that level design, we would then use what we already know of Sonic Heroes and full blast that shit in terms of adding more ideas that would work in each stage theme. So for example, if you have a forest level, really play to the strengths of that forest level without so much trying to play it safe, much like how Green Forest was like in Sonic Adventure 2, rather than how Sonic Advance 2 played around with Leaf Forest. Instead, go full Frog Forest from Sonic Heroes in my opinion and just make it better using the components of Green Forest and perhaps even 
and add a bat from Sonic Unleashed, or even how Superstars handled Speed Jungle Zone if I'm being honest. But yeah, the whole atmosphere in this case is very important in a Sonic game because as you're traversing through the game's content, the need to be a part of the world setting also has to naturally flow through. For Sonic, this can obviously be done through the level themes as we've seen in previous games out there where they ensure that Sonic is either in a mechanical city-like structure of, you know, Grand Metropolis or how in the classic games, you do have Sonic going from lush tropical hills in Emerald Hill to suddenly up in the heavens like in Sky Sanctuary. That or somehow spend time in a carnival, I guess. And he does this in almost every single classic Sonic game. How is this even possible? And this is where I would even give some credit to Sonic... For, for Sonic Force, I can't, I can't say the word. Uh, I'll just put it on the screen. Well, we'll give credit to that game because despite having short automated boost buttons to win stages, if you decide not to do that and take a leisure stroll and whatnot, you'll realize that the atmosphere of the stages in that game are actually pretty decent. They tell you more or less of what is going on and they present something new to the mix or at least try to give off the sentiment that the level design is part of a larger story, which we can obviously argue and discuss on a later date. Another way of allowing the blend of classic and modern elements together would be to expand on the level design and by expanding it, I mostly mean to use the stage structure of a classic Sonic game and transform that into a 3D stage completely, baby. Now granted, this is where the problems lies with the Sonic formula as well how can you really take what works in a 2d setting and implement it on a 3d setting that isn't so much full remaking the core principles of the original game's level design with sonic here you see that the 2d and 3d games are roughly two completely different entities. Something like what we've seen in 3D Mario, Zelda, and even 3D Metroid, where those games tackled the initial ideas of what made them work in 2D and extended them beyond the scope of a 3D platformer or action adventure game. Sure, they may look different and certainly play different, but what enabled them to thrive in 2D works well also in 3D, where you're still having a sense of familiarity working for you as you go through the motions. That is why in the boost era of Sonic games, there were some 2D sections built into the machinations of the 3D level design all in order to sort of replicate that classic Sonic gameplay style. Or how in the Sonic Adventure games, since you know those were the first 3D Sonic games, they had the structure of the game be built around a 2D style like how in Sonic Adventure 1 the stages reflected more of an exploration component with its larger stage structure and Sonic Adventure 2 having more of the confined linear design that you would often see in most classic Sonic games. Also Sonic Adventure 1's level design was really good if I gotta be honest and I don't understand how we can't get back to that almost 25 years later. In this ideal Sonic game that we're constructing here, it's not about putting Sonic in the 2D space with 3D controls, but fully giving him a 3D workaround with tools and abilities of the 2D games in a 3D space, like what we saw with the drop dash and spin dash back in Sonic Frontiers. Fortunately, unfortunately, the best way to describe what I have said would be the perfect Sonic stage layout with good gimmicks, speed, controls, fluidity, and atmosphere would be a Spark the Electric Jester game. And I say unfortunately here because... Huh, no wonder why I have no credibility. But unlike those comparisons that are usually made by people within the community who are pegging Sonic down, not in that way, all to demonstrate that they know what a quote-unquote good Sonic game should be, my take is a little bit different. You see, my comparison is more of taking notes of what Spark has done to try and use that for a Sonic game, while also complementing the core philosophy and game design that the series has done to make it stand out on its own, allowing for something extra to enjoy in the process. Plus, Spark the Electric Jester on its own is a pretty good franchise, you know, totally recommend playing those games whenever you can. So we got controls out of the way, we also talked a little bit about gameplay style, environmental design, and stage design. What else could I possibly be missing here? Oh yeah! Yeah, sorry for a freeze frame moment here, but this part of the video wasn't really planned at all, so I just kind of want to do a little haha <laughs> skip moment to make the video funnier, so yeah, here you go. Also, Sonic music? Just give us more Kelly and Quinn, please, because to have him for four vocal songs and then dip out for the next game would be a freaking crime. Anyways, you like Sonic stories? Okay, now here's the deal with stories in Sonic games. They're pretty inconsistent. I mean, they either make or break the experience depending on the game's core formula, and in some cases, 
and even makes people scratch their heads when they see a Sonic game like Frontiers and go, wait a minute, Sonic has lore? And buddy, that's not even half of it either. This idea first originated in the classic games, I would argue, where Sonic CD and Sonic 3 and Knuckles provided a great setting and story by means of just connecting the dots after beating each zone. Sonic CD showed that even with just the opening intro alone, with Sonic ensuring that his mission to rescue Little Planet from the hands of Eggman is actually a lot bigger than it is, seeing it all being chained up to the Earth in the bunch. And with Sonic 3 and Knuckles' entire opening sequence and level designs, it shows that Angel Island isn't just the first zone of the game, but is a literal world that Sonic has to go through in order to stop Eggman's schemes. That and also some snowboarding. Sonic Adventure 1, 2, 0, 06, Unleash, and also Sonic Heroes are clear demonstrations of the Sonic lore as Sonic wasn't just about beating Eggman for the tenth time, but that there is a lot more in the world around him, thus putting him in a larger context to experience and enjoy. There were even more characters to build off of Sonic and his characteristics this time around, allowing at some points to even play as them to see their side of the story. And there were even some cool set pieces to explore and appreciate from time to time, like Sonic Unleash's entire gameplay design in both of the day and night stages and there was even sonic fighting literal demons and eldritch horrors at super sonic because of course he would he's that guy you know lastly but certainly not least there was even the moon being pissed on and a giant space lizard that had acne as his weakness like how can you not say sonic games have no story hell while we're at it i want more of that edgy shit from shadow the hedgehog again sonic team and for the perfect sonic game that we're building off of here the story has to play a very very integral role, enough to leave an impact and say that it was the Sonic game of all time. It needs to stick with the consistent personalities of Sonic and the characters involved in it while also allowing them to grow and be their own selves in the process, something that the adventure games and frontiers have demonstrated, allowing a level of reciprocity to occur. Sonic also needs to be Sonic because for many people out there, they know Sonic through many stages of their lives. For a kid in the 90s, someone viewing this sees Sonic as the little blue rodent punk that is out to cause havoc from a greedy egg-shaped mustache man who just won a theme park to call his own city. For someone in the early 2000s like myself growing up, we saw Sonic as the shonen MC who just wants to live as free as he possibly can while also providing a peaceful world for all his friends to live in by slaying a god by the end of it. Or if you grew up in the 2010s, like I also did, you saw that shonen MC personality get thrown out the window because they figured if they just throw in a bunch of chili dog references and obnoxious one liners then yeah that would really sell the franchise some more no but in this case sonic needs to be the perfect blend of all three or at least be more of the 90s and early 2000s again seeing sonic frontiers give us that with sonic being that protagonist ready to risk it all and save the world from a blood moon while also being a prick towards eggman is what i want no what every sonic fan who grew up with him wants him to be moving forward. Give us more of that Sonic who actually isn't invincible from the threats to the world around him and actually flesh out his character and relationships with his friends and also make his quips and jokes actually funny and not obnoxious. Basically what we want for a perfect Sonic game is to give us a Sonic that we remember back in Secret Rings, Black Knight, 06, Unleash and the adventure games where he understood that while the world was bleak and people were ready to give up hope, he decided to stop that with a smirk on his face because as the Sonic theme goes, it doesn't matter now what happens, I, or rather Sonic in this case, will never give up the fight. Whoa, what? Where do you think you're off to all by yourself? What? But my memory is back now and... Well, from here on out, it's my responsibility, so, um... I mean, there's no reason for you to come along, so I should just... Do I need a reason to want to help out a friend? Thanks, Sonic. Yeah! <laughs> At this point in the video, you're probably asking yourself... What was really the purpose of this one? Was it really to claim a superiority complex of sorts and say that I know how to make a Sonic game better than anyone else? Maybe. But as I am writing these last few paragraphs from this script and seeing the footage of almost every Sonic game out there, I've realized that the true intentions of this video was just to highlight the good qualities of a Sonic game. Yeah, I don't have a proper way to end this or present some final thing out there to make my case like Justice For All's Farewell My Turnabout because, 
we already have that perfect Sonic game to say the least. Like Project 06 for example. That fan made project that remade the original Sonic 06 release with better mechanics, cutscene transitions, and just fixing what made the game break is what to some probably right now watching this video consider to be the definitive perfect Sonic game. Hell, it was what I was thinking when writing this video out, but at the same time, it's merely a product of fixing something that already released and not something completely original. The perfect Sonic game needs to come from the heart of Sonic Team and needs to be as ambitious as the next title, but also stay consistent with it. And whether that next title ends up being Sonic Frontiers 2 or even that fabled Sonic Adventure 3, these ideas need to be taken into consideration, otherwise we're gonna be back from square one. Sonic Frontiers was a good step forward, don't get me wrong about that, but after seeing the amount of time looking back at my own childhood, as I hope many did watching this as well, it's time to own up and say that Sonic Team needs to take the IP way more seriously now. They need to push back at Sega into giving them more time, money, and development resources to finally give us a high quality game that very few can disagree on like a Super Mario Odyssey or a Breath of the Wild or Ocarina of Time or hell, even a Resident Evil 4. Sonic needs to be Sonic again. If I didn't spend almost a whole ass week scripting, finding footage, gathering songs as background music, making bits and hell, editing this final product, highlighting this point, then damn man, I guess I really screwed myself over, didn't I? More importantly, this video is also just one big old love letter to why I love Sonic the Hedgehog, why I love playing the games no matter how much we say it's good or bad in 10 years time. Because to me, Sonic isn't just a video game franchise. It shaped my entire perspective on gaming since my eyes were glued onto the TV screen seeing Sonic running away from a big orca whale in 2005 on the Nintendo GameCube. Is what made me enjoy games growing up like Zelda, Pokemon, and RPGs like Persona and Final Fantasy. It made me appreciate storytelling and how the themes of never giving up and just going through life at your own pace is important than what others tell you how to live life. And it even made me understand that there is fun to be had in the things that you enjoy doing, all because of a blue animal that likes to run fast and eat chili dogs for a living. And with this, we can also argue it's the same philosophy with Pokemon as Sonic is starting to feel nothing more but a cash grab nowadays, as all intended to sell him as the mascot that he probably never was, rather than really innovate on new ideas, ideas that I presented, that I know can be done well if they just tried a bit harder for once. I want Sonic to be as good as it can be, and I know that many out there who love the franchise don't just want to remake old games and make them better, but they just want something new and refreshing for Sonic that takes 10 steps forward and only one back if needed. Sonic Frontiers, again, is a stepping stone in all of this, but with 32 years or 33 of 2D, 3D, handheld, mobile, or whatever how many games are there, that stepping stone isn't enough anymore. Anymore. It's time to leap into new territories rather than slowly take small steps in between. And so with all of that, I guess I'm just gonna leave everybody here off with the following. You guys decide the fate of Sonic. You guys determine if my ideas are worth exploring or not and actually taking into some interest into in the comments down below. You guys decide if I'm just some whiny YouTuber looking to hit platinum because I think I know how to make a video game, which I don't. But again, you decide if you actually care or not to see a good Sonic game for once in your lives because what I'm about to do now is just sit back, get ready for another video idea and hope that Sonic finally goes beyond new horizons for once in his goddamn career. Sonic!